What is up? This is Joshua Castro. Welcome to another very quick Ableton tutorial. Um, I threw up a set yesterday. Uh, it's a Complextro set, just using some loops right out of uh, Loop Master's mix tools, and it came out pretty dope. And I had I did some things uh, inside the set that I wanted to share with you guys for your live sets. And one of the things was an auto filter uh, on channel three. I wanted to be able to cut off the high end and then switch my loop and then bring in those high ends and kind of have it fade nicely without a big abrupt change in the, uh, the clip. Uh, they're very different clips, but uh, with some other high end on these other um, lines here, you couldn't really hear the switch and then when it came back in, it faded in real nice. But anyway, uh, you can check out the live set by clicking uh, the link. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out how I did that. Um, and if you uh, are a follower of my tutorials, you know that I did a more in-depth audio effects rack with um, some gains on it and a bunch of different effects. And you can check that out by clicking this link. But uh, I, for this channel, I didn't want all the fancy stuff. I just wanted the auto filter. That's all I was going to do to that channel. So um, if you just bring in the auto filter, it default, it's already cutting off some frequency. And it's got a little bit of Q on it, which is it kind of gives a little nudge, um, a little amp to this this frequency range here. Uh, and if you bring it all the way over your frequency, uh, it's still cutting off a little bit, but you know uh, the human ear really can't hear this high. But that doesn't matter. I want to completely shut off the device when I am not actually using it. That's just you know. That's just me. You don't have to do that, but that's what I do. So the way, the workaround for that is to take the audio effects rack and drop that on the channel, and then take your auto filter and put that in there, and then open up your macro knobs and come over to the, the on-off switch for the device and hit map to macro one, and then take the frequency, right click, and map to device on. And now both of those are mapped to this macro. And if you see, as I'm turning it here, the device is off and then it's on. And this is just kind of a random spot to be doing that. And also, if the more to the left I am, the the more high frequency is cut off. Excuse me. And the more I turn to the right, the the more high frequency comes back. So I want to switch that. I actually want that to be opposite. Um, so if I hit map mode, come over to here and bring this over. Um, First thing I want to do is come over to where it's frequency, right click and hit invert range. And now when it's all the way to the left, that's how I want it. And as I come to the right, it starts to cut off the high frequency. And I want it to be all the way off. When it's on 19.9, I want the device just to shut off. So well, how I do that is I hit one here. On the device on, I hit one, zero. And now, right now, you can see that the device is off. If I go out of here. Um, you can see the device is off, and as I turn it to the right, it comes back on and starts cutting off frequency. And then when I can bring it back, it will shut itself off. And that, you know, that's just me being a stickler. I don't want this to be on if it's all the way off, um, over to the left. So uh, I hope that helps. You can use that technique for a bunch of different uh, effects and stuff like that. But uh, like a beat repeat. But like I said, there's a more in-depth tutorial here. Um, if you want to get more in-depth with audio effects racks, which are very versatile and pretty sweet. Um, also, you should go check out the live set. It came out pretty dope. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Peace.